well. Um, so if you haven't done so yet, just take a second, make sure you got your episode loaded and paused at the zero second mark. And we're going to count down and press play at the same time. So if everybody's ready. Yep. All right, count of three. One, two, three. Oh, wow. We didn't see Sissy that walk. We didn't see Sissy that walk last week. No. So we get to see the full video. What team are you guys on? What Adore. team do you think I'm on? What team do you think I'm on? Adore. Yes, of course. Hundred percent. What team oh. were you on when you first watched this L? Um, Regina, did you watch this before? Yes, right? I also Team Adore. You were Team Adore. Yeah, I watched this as well. I watched a year after it had premiered. So I had watched it when season seven was going on at the time. Uh, but I was Team Adore at the time. <laughs> the black horse. Did you miss Gia? I honestly completely forgot no. about
That domino dress was so beautiful. <laughs> So these queens are queens from the last five seasons. Oh, cool. I was wondering. Yes, and I am loving seeing them because some of them are my favorites. Those boobs, though, man. Those boobs. Ken Kendra, before... I know that you're spoiled, but before you were spoiled, who, what team are you on? Well, my favorite from this season was Milk. I knew from the moment I saw him that he would not make it till the end, but I was really crossing my fingers and hoping. And then, you know, just went out real quick. But based on who's left. Oh, Bianca. I love Bianca. And I think part of the reason I love Bianca is the attitude. And some of the queens that you've seen so far are queens that have won the past seasons. Ha, that was funny, Adele Dazeem. Lies with Nelly's sister. I mean, that wasn't really a British accent. That was just an affected voice in like all of the cliches of British people. Yeah, but it was so good. Oh, it was expert. It was amazing. But I, I'm just saying, Ben, Dela didn't technically lie in saying I can't do a British accent. Ripple I'm just, just I'm just I'm just I'm favorite. just defending my girl. That that Dela was the was the heartbreak for me. I agree with you, Mandy. The the Ruple Ruple is it? Yeah, it's Ruple is such amazing. a great line. Oh my god. <laughs> Still the best mini challenge. Oh, hands down. It, it really set the bar too high for mini challenges. They, they, they rarely ever got as good as that.
that was still one of the funniest moments when Vivacious came in but couldn't undo the the, <laughs> the little fabric. That was very pretty. Yeah, that was one of the best looks. I don't remember that look. Just the matter of fact, Ornatia. <laughs> oh my goodness, that'll never, ever, ever, ever not be funny. Ornatia, they, they didn't. Vivacious didn't get enough mileage out of uh, out of Ornatia. There could have been so much more. Yes, it's a shame we didn't get more Ornatia. Oh my goodness, that was really emotional. Why can't I get my phone? <laughs> oh, bless her heart. Every time I see milk now, I think of you, Kendra. <laughs> yes. That's where Dora gets her personality. Oh, well. I love Raven. Raven so was much. she seemed so offended at that mascara <laughs> funny. Oh uh, god, Conja, get a grip. <laughs> Raven does Rue's makeup now and has for the oh, last few seasons of the show. Really? Amazing. Yeah, and still does and does it for like the UK. Like Raven is Rue's makeup artist. That's awesome. What season was she on? Two? Two. Yeah.
did they cut this episode down at all to to remove uh, um, the uh, the the basketball player? Yes, I'm pretty sure that they did. Oh no. Courtney's seen worse at home. She's like, this is not scary. <laughs> yeah, Courtney was at home there. But I can totally see why they cut that, though. Oh, I love that look. i i you know i gotta admit i was not as into this as everybody else was i wasn't either but i think that's because i don't they like just look like animal. big styrofoam it just looked like big styrofoam pieces Although, fun fact about Courtney's look there, the one with the wings, there was an episode of The Simpsons a couple of years ago where they had Rue as a voice actor and a couple of the drag queens, and one of the looks that was on the show was that. Oh, that's funny. My goodness. Oh, my goodness. That was one of my favorite moments, I have to be honest. <laughs> Oh, 
their friendship is one of my favorite things. I love Leah so much. <laughs> De Niro, <laughs> what is he trying to I'm glad I'm glad that they didn't show that because I wouldn't have really I would have been confused. I would not have cared. Yeah, that part. <laughs> Like, why was she supposed to be lip syncing again? It was just. Yeah, I assume that they were just going to have it on. I don't I've never watched Keeping Up with the Kardashians. So I just assume that they were going to show her being a judge and some of the behind the scenes stuff or something. Yeah, upon rewatch of this, I have come to realize that Khloe Kardashian and Neil Patrick Harris and his partner were my least favorite guest judges of the season. Yeah, I would agree with that, too. Raja reminds me of Iggy Azalea. Ow. Not in a bad oh way. I, I, can see it. I love yeah. that. I love that line. Why is she so proud of tilapia? It's like the cheapest fish. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally true. There's a line that Sharon says that's gonna come up because I I had to pre-watch this episode. Um that I think you're gonna enjoy, John. I I, I think you'd agree with what Sharon would say. It's coming up.
<laughs> Who is that? Who is that? What season? With with the the big blonde hair. Yes. Yeah. Alaska season five. Oh my Amazing. god! She's one of my favorites. True. She's just right. I mean, say what you want about Bianca, but her help of a door has helped a door make it to the finals. So, even if she was point. doing it's it for the point. cameras. That is my favorite line from this season. I had to work because it was see-through and I wanted to show my body.
<laughs> Pretend is gash. Just leave it in the hallway. Is this changing anybody's opinions on any of the queens? Not mine. No. I really am just realizing how much they edit what they want us to see. Yeah, because I didn't need, I didn't think that those two moments about Courtney really were all that. I think that they wanted us to Yeah. They wanted us to feel like those moments were a lot sweeter than they were but they i remember when those moments happened they were they were nice but they weren't like yeah they were nice sweet. but they weren't they yeah. didn't deserve they, they they certainly weren't like oh she's got a heart of gold now, yeah you know um i think that that their depiction of both um bianca and uh and adore were pretty close to accurate um but they're reaching know, with I still, Courtney. I still feel like I still feel like Bianca's Bianca's sort of a little more on than Adora, and that still that still bugs me. I don't think she's on. I think she's just very quick witted, and it, you know, it just comes off as being. Well, I think that she's kind of on when she's being when she's being the quote unquote heart of gold Bianca that we're talking about. Like I, I can kind of see her that what I mentioned before, where I can almost feel like she's out of her peripheral vision. She notices the cameras on her. I think she's savvy. I think she's smart and she's a good contestant. That is true, but, but like the, audience seeing her be that way isn't going to help her win because they won't see it until after so i mean technically all she would be winning is public opinion well um, not necessarily after. not necessarily because if she thinks she can give the producers the kind of footage they need to sway the public um, then remember yeah. it's the producers who end up picking the winner <laughs> you know so she could actually be shaping her own her own win there by making sure she's playing to what the producers need for a really great season. That's true. But I still think that Adore would not have gotten this far without her. You may be right about that. Uh, that was a good point. Oh, is this it? Oh, yes.
the Courtney crazy eyes. <laughs> I wonder why they bleeped that out. What they bleep out? My pussy's on fire. They 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 bleeped out. I mean, not bleeped it out, but they warped it in a way that basically like kind of removed it from the song. This feels like such a 90s music video. I was just thinking, uh, like, you know, if I were still in college getting ready to go out, this would be on repeat in the back. It's a banger. Come on. The song is good. The music video, I'm not sure if I would, <laughs> I would say that I think it's a good music video. Adore bodied. Adore. It's, it's all about adore. She's exactly. So exactly. She bodied. <laughs> I didn't get to see them filming this last week, but Darian feels out of place in this video. You can just tell she feels a little awkward. Very much so. I noticed that as well as I was watching it. She's really good in the close-ups, though. Yeah, her close-ups are great. Wait a second, was that it? October. Over. Why did that feel so short? Were there less commercial breaks? I don't know. I agree. I, I was like, that that was it? Was it a shorter episode? Or was it just we were... I don't know. I, that felt really short. No, it was. it's about the same running time as the other episodes that we've watched. So I do think that they cut like a minute or so from when they were showing clips from the makeover wedding episode. But overall they kept like they it, they kept as much in there as they possibly could. But these episodes are really like you, I feel like they seem shorter because it's a lot of what we've already seen. There wasn't a whole lot that was unseen footage. Yeah, I know, but I mean, all, it felt like it went by really quickly in, in that I was really enjoying it. So there was a lot of, I mean, even, given the fact that we'd seen it all, it didn't feel boring. That's more, that's sort of more my point is that it felt like it just went by so quickly. And that's usually because it feels new, even though most of this wasn't. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe just not even that it feels new, that it was just all really, really great. It was just a really great recap. Yeah, it was because halfway through, I was like, I, I didn't, I couldn't tell if there were less commercial breaks or something because it did really seem like it was going really quickly. But you know why? I think it's because it was actually kind of nice to see all of those, all of those queens again. You know, yeah. like I had kind of really missed April. I had really missed um, Trinity. I mean, she hasn't even been gone that long. And I really missed her. Milk. I mean. And the finale is an hour long. Ooh. Wait. How long are these? 42 minutes or 45. Oh, okay. so just, yeah, in so the 40 just, something range. Oh, so these so the the finale is just said 15 minutes longer.
So, I mean, I think that, uh, I think that this episode definitely, definitely told me one thing, and that is Courtney's not winning. Why do you think so? Because they tried, they tried, but it was really weak. They, they attempted to, to make Courtney look a little bit more competitive than I think she felt going into the finals. And, but it just didn't compare to how much they made Adore and Bianca look good. You know, yeah. The, the the main thing that they focused on for Courtney was her looks. You know, that was it. Looks and her singing ability. But when they got to like her personality, it was a really weak attempt to to kind of make her personality look better than than we remember it. Um, Probably because they didn't have that much footage to go by. The, yeah, being... and the fact that they didn't have that much footage, like, it just, uh, you know, but they tried anyway. Um, I, I think that, that they want they want her to feel more competitive going in so that it feels more surprising. But 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 I think that they, they did a... They, they, they spent more time on Adore and Bianca. I really... I, I'm still holding out hope that it's a door. I'm really like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just really holding out hope, but there was so, there was a lot of focus on, on her sort of youngness that kind of, that, that, that seems to suggest that she's, that, that she's going to be celebrated, but is not going to win. Like Hunter may have been right from last week. Right. Yeah. Hunter, you are, you're, you're, uh, are you, what team are you on? I'm, I'm Bianca. My, from the beginning, it was, uh, uh, Ben, Ben and Bianca were my top two. From... And how do you feel about, about, um, about a door? I love Adore. And honestly, if she were to win, I'd be like, you know, good for her. Like, I really do love her. I think she's very, very sweet. And, like I just like I said, I just I just want her to have a few more years under her belt because I feel like she's going to be phenomenal. She's just not quite polished in there yet enough. She definitely, both of them definitely feel like queens that should come back. Yeah, but so. probably the one who wins won't come back because I don't think that that usually winners come back, do they? Elle, have any winners come back to, to do another, like, all-stars type thing? Yes. Oh. oh. Okay. Interesting. So I, I, I would love to see Adore come back in an all-stars. Me too. Would, I, it, be I would, I would it, would it be spoiling us to let us know if... Would it be spoiling us to let us know if Adore comes back in all-stars? I don't think so, would it? Great. If winners can come back, then... If winners can come back, then I don't think it's spoiling us. Does Adore come yeah. back? Yes. She does. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, I'm watching that. What oh, season? Fuck yes. <laughs> Excuse my French. You guys just watch All Stars. It is the greatest. I love All Stars so much more than the regular series. It's just the best. It is the best. It's what I watch the most. I think I've watched All Stars 2 and All Stars 3 more than probably any season of any other TV show. All Stars 2 was good. I will say that. But I have you've a lot watched, to say. You've watched All Stars 2 and 3 more than any other season, including Gilmore Girls. Yes. You just have it on in the background. All the time. I love it so much. <laughs> I love that. Oh, <laughs> uh, Okay. Good to know. And when did they start All Stars? After what season of of um, Drag Race? All Stars one was after season 
four before season five. All Stars two was after season seven. All Stars three was after season nine, and then it goes on from there because there's they okay. they just ended All Stars six. I don't know. From this conversation, uh, I'm thinking we should watch some more Drag Race together. I think so. Would I'm thinking agree? so. John, are you picking up the vibe? Because I am. I'm. I'm picking up the vibe. What? Uh, <laughs> what season does Adore come back on? Do yeah. We, that's not. That's not spoiling. Is that not spoiling? No, I don't think so. Not, yeah, I don't. I don't think bad. so. I mean, that 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 could probably be. I mean, it's not. Well, I'll say this. Um. I don't foresee myself going in order and watching all of these. So I would almost definitely, after this is over, regardless of whether Adore wins or doesn't win, looking up what season she's on, because I would most likely want to watch that season. All Stars so, 2. All Stars okay. 2. That's one of the two that you that you watch a lot. That I love, yes. <laughs> cool. Yeah, because I want to see her after a couple more years, especially with the exposure of the show. Um, you know, I would assume she would get a lot of work and, you know, be in the industry a lot more. And I feel like she would come back really seasoned just from this exposure. So I would love to see her compete again against other queens. And you... You said you you um you were interested in Alaska, John? Yes. So maybe we should definitely watch All Stars 2. Yes. I have thoughts about All Stars 2. So I think we should because I've been harboring those feelings inside for years. Tell me about <laughs> Alaska. What's going on with Alaska? I mean, she definitely strikes me as a really fun contestant. Was she was she great on her first season? Incredible. Mm -mm, cool. Because I don't know if I would say a a anybody was to me like I don't I I would I don't think that anybody on this season had the level of of fun that I got from her specifically her during her interview sequences in this episode. I don't think anybody reached that level. I think the other folks, the other queens that they had in this episode that were that were adding their little bits of humor were uh, all really good. And I would say that members of this season reached that level, but Alaska was on a different plane. And I'm just wondering if that was in her seat in her first season if she brought that level in that season as well to quote geo absolutely <laughs> <laughs> awesome that's pretty great so, that's so, it's actually oh, wait, Nikki, i think you were talking about <laughs> She's one of the best. She's one of my favorite queens from the first moment I, I saw her. She's so great. Al, can you tell us a little bit about like what is the the criteria of what they're looking for in in the winner? It really varies. Um, the winners that have that won previous seasons were all very, very different. Um, it's like there's been uh, comedy queens that have won. There have been there was a queen that was a little bit more. Uh, let's say like kind of like a spooky queen. I don't know, Regina, if you wanted or Kendra, because I think you've seen like that. an Elvira, <laughs> like an Elvira. Yeah, type. yeah, like you know, just a little bit different. And we have we've had a complete like fashion, you know, fashion like runway model. Um, there's a fashionista. Been, 
yeah, and then like a winner that was pretty much like a Rue clone. <laughs> like really there so there's been there's been a variety of of winners up to this point so what they look for in a winner seems to really vary i mean they're looking like generally in the most simplest of terms they're looking for somebody to represent the show so they want somebody who's performed well and been strong so they want somebody who's, you know, who's who's kind of been consistently good throughout the season, has been able to show off their talent and their skills, and someone that they feel like can represent the show because they would often do tours with the with the winner headlining, so they need someone who's also like going to be a strong performer. So legit, what I said last week. <laughs> Yeah. How much does um like fan opinion or public opinion play into who they choose as winner or does it Sorry, could you say that again, Mandy? How much does like how much a contestant is liked by the fans play into who they choose as a winner or does it play into it at all? Because I know you said that, like, the people at home get to vote for their favorites. How much does that play into who actually wins? Well, they haven't confirmed or denied anything throughout the history of the show. But it seems to play a pretty large part. So queens that are pretty disliked by the general fan base. And so usually, like, they do polls on different social media platforms and usually the queens that rank at the bottom don't win now this is not always but generally speaking the the fandom does have quite a quite a say in in who wins and i have a lot of kind of behind the scenes info about the finale which i think will be really interesting so on friday I will definitely be sharing some of that stuff about like the fans and some of the stuff that because the the live show is filmed in it, it's filmed in front of a live audience. It's not aired until a few weeks later. So base so what happens is the show airs as we've like we've seen the regular season episode like say this was airing now. And then the finale is filmed in front of a live audience who would have seen the entire season. And then the finale is aired. So it's, it, it, it's a, it definitely, because like there's actually fans, they are reacting live as things are happening during the finale. So people do have quite, a bit to say to put it just just to say that much until friday and is the decision ultimately ruse like it is every week like do they do their kind of deliberation with the other judges and then but ultimately rue decides ultimately it's up to rue yes so if fan input it's like they're polling and everything then that really gives i feel like it would give a door a really big leg up because obviously i feel like she's kind of the season's um favorite you know like she's really locked herself on you know what i mean like on on people she's the underdog yeah uh, you know yeah like she struggled in the beginning yeah she's an underdog but i feel like she just from the beginning has just had a really captivating personality So are we, I don't know if there's any Team Courtney people here, but are we all just kind of thinking it's kind of between Adore and Bianca? That's what I'm thinking. I just, I just, I think. I, think I, just love, yeah. I just love Courtney because I want to look like her, her when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> She's just gorgeous. It's not fair. 
<laughs> but yeah, I think I think that especially if public opinions taken into account, I feel like a lot of the fans probably feel the same way a lot of us have felt about Courtney, um, that she's just not a likable person. When this originally aired, was Courtney liked or disliked? Because I hate her. I hate her guts. I've hated her from jump. You hate her guts. Ew, I hate her. Ew. Every time I see yeah. her, I just want to karate chop her. I don't <laughs> like her at chop. all. So she was actually incredibly well loved oh, and the fandom was yeah. pretty obsessed oh i'm disappointed really i'm surprised Why? because she's pretty are you Come kidding on. really could we get a huge like surprise here at the end and it ends up being courtney <laughs> oh no i hope not i hope not what would you guys do oh, if courtney goodness. won <laughs> if courtney um, won Oh, I, I'm would be I would be shocked. I I'm mean, writing I a would... strongly worded letter to this production if she wins. I'm There's... with you, Hunter, right there. Dear Probably 2014, exclamation point. who do you think you are? <laughs> to RuPaul and World of Wonder. <laughs> I would Lots of exclamation be... points, underlining words, like, yes. There will be carbon copies filed, like, no. <laughs> Left for Emily Gilmore to stumble upon. <laughs> oh, can you comment a little bit on, like, what the drag community as a whole would think about Courtney's style? Like, I don't, like, when I look at her, I don't think drag queen, because she's just beautiful, versus, um, like, I look at Bianca and I'm like, okay, like, that's, that's a drag queen. So is, is there thoughts like that in, in the drag community? Well, so there was, I remember when it aired, there being kind of some initial pushback because it was like, oh, Courtney just like looks like a woman, but not a drag queen. And then that caused, there was a lot of discussion about it. And I mean, I think we talked about it earlier in the season. We were talking about like milk and how milk's fashion really wasn't like appreciated on the show. But now, like in retrospect, absolutely is. And I feel like it's kind of been a thing with Courtney, but Courtney was really loved because of her fashion and quite frankly her body like what she looked like she was like and still i would say is considered one of the most popular queens to have been on the series actually this top three as i said before is considered to be the strongest top three of any of the seasons and are pretty much three of the most loved queens so that. Courtney, Courtney was still what was, wow. you know, said, yeah, it's like, it's, yeah, it's, it's very true. All, all three of them still today, if you were to ask any fan of drag race to say who the top, the strongest top three is, they would say season six. I there's been if, polls, there's been polls and all the stuff and they, they always come out on top. I wonder if Courtney's fans were members of Remarkist, if we could have swayed their opinions. I doubt it. Ooh, usually when people have a, a favorite like this, like you kind of stick. And there's a lot of, I feel like there's a lot. Of... And scene. <laughs> 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 I was, I was going to say, I feel like there's a lot of pretty privilege going on with Courtney. And that's why she's gotten so far. And it has to be why Same. she has so many fans because her personality is just lacking to me so yeah they couldn't even edit it to make it look like she had much of a personality like even when they were trying to i don't i, I guess what i struggle with like if i was gonna if i wanted to go out to a drag show if it was a whole bunch of courtney's i would be like this isn't kind of what i signed yeah. up to come to 
It would it would seem more like a beauty pageant. Yeah. Yeah. Like I kind of like I I, well, I like the grit. Alaska, that's sort of what a Alaska little... was was getting at, right? Right? Like Alaska was like, yeah, you know, Courtney comes comes out, and it's like, uh, who is this girl? <laughs> who is this girl? Who let this girl on the stage? Security. Somebody grab, yeah. please escort this girl out of here. I mean, that's basically what the critique was, was just, you just looking too much like a girl. You, you're not actually doing drag. You know, not that she, talk- uh, she looks better. <laughs> she looks better than me. Like, it's not just that she looks like a woman. She looks better than a lot of women, too. Yeah, like, I mean, women have to deal with, like, much prettier girls in the room all the time. And I was as soon as I saw Courtney, I was like, the thing we don't need more of is pretty blonde girls. <laughs> like, at all. Like, You're like, really bitch. need to get out of here. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like she might be one of those, uh, like, I, I think straight guys might be questioning <laughs> their straightness after her, seeing her. I don't know if she's so pretty. She's just like, you know, I don't know. I, I think she could pass as a woman straight up. Like, the other ones, you can kind of tell. I don't know if that's... But it is, that's, it is like, it is like something to think about though that like her personality kind of sucks and she's just really pretty and like I mean the talent is there on some level but like you know she can't do everything so she doesn't really like I don't know like I don't know what the redeeming qualities are besides she's pretty and that's just like not enough for me and it's kind of annoying that like oh okay yet again the pretty one gets ahead and it's kind of annoying so would yes. Courtney Act and Regina George be besties? Yes. Oh no, they would kill each other. <laughs> There's no I feel like they would team up because they recognize that they're the 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 pretty popular kids. So they would they would totally be like join a little have a little dynamic duo. But like I actually think the comparison is apt because I think she is Regina George. She's just mean. She's not like creatively mean. She's just mean. Whereas like yeah. Bianca is super funny when she's being mean. Like she's actually the joke is really there. So, you know, if you're gonna be and mean, you better be funny. Isn't that kind of ironic and a little bit funny that we let people be mean as long as we can laugh at them being mean? But if somebody's yeah. just being mean and they're not funny, we're like, Well, that was rude. But funny people were like, huh, that was funny. It's yeah, a little I, mean, gray. I still firmly believe that Bianca is a very sweet person who is just really good. I agree. At being funny. I agree. I, I have feel so like- much I want to say, but all I will say is that the three of them, Bianca, Adore, and Courtney, are all still incredibly close, like best friend level right wow. now really? if that tells you anything wow okay well that does that does do they all something. three win then yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's the twist they all win they all win and they live happily ever after you you know what it is like because in the beginning i'll be honest like i ben and bianca were my top two and i really liked courtney but then like you know, like her personality got in the way. And then even now in the episode, they were showing her, her, her entrance and her entrance was, is this America's next top model? Like she knows yeah. that she's beautiful. And then yeah. just rubbed me the wrong way. Now. Um, I, I shared this on discord, but I listened to uh, an interview with Ben De La Creme earlier. This, it was from October earlier this year. So it's very recent and something that she talked about that made me really think about how we're thinking about Courtney was they discussed drag as camp. And I think that's what's missing from Courtney is that she's the only queen in this season that like is devoid of camp. Like there, there's no um, like all of the other queens like have a little bit of an exaggeration to them or a lot if, like in the in terms of like milk or or even Ben De La Creme, like, I, I feel like that's what's missing for me is that she's always just so beautiful and it's just sort of straight beauty 
instead of like that campiness that so that should or at least in my opinion comes with drag and because what they're doing is they're exploiting camp to you know like as part of the the art form but i feel like courtney's just dressing up really pretty and so mm-hmm. i don't know like that just kind of made me think about why courtney rubs me the wrong way like and just always has it's because there's something lacking in the performance of it because I expect more camp from from drag. It's so funny because I was just gonna mention like the same exact thing. Um, I earlier when we were having this conversation, I totally forget. Like it was one of the earlier episodes. Um, I didn't get to say this in the moment, but I was gonna say exactly what Diana had said. I I think there's a lot of pushback in terms of Courtney's drag because of that there the the quote unquote campiness is not there um it's more eurocentric is not the word but like conventionally attractive yeah quote unquote he the like the the secrets model. Yeah. um <laughs> that's definitely there and so any like with bianca's drag there's something distinct about it there's something distinct about the quote unquote like clown makeup looks that she she does and so I was gonna say and I know Elle she touched on that when we were having this discussion earlier that she considers Courtney's uh looks drag and I consider it that as well and Elle and anybody else who's watched the show correct me if I'm wrong there have been queens in like future seasons that do kind of go for that look that Courtney has that's kind of devoid of that campiness and kind of more falls in line with uh, those like con- conventionally attractive sort of looks and ideals. Yeah. Yes. You, you know what it is for me? Um, it's not necessarily the being void of camp, but I look at drag as being a form of performance art and she doesn't perform Mm -hmm. like she doesn't have anything artistic or um anything like that about her and I think that's what bugs me so much is that like I want to see I want to see art when I'm watching the show I don't want to just see somebody who is pretty I want to see somebody who's expressing themselves who's artistic well, and I yeah. I don't get it from her. I, I will agree. say I I will say just to counter that there are a lot of fashion designers like high fashion designers who would disagree with that who would say that like you know the art is in Courtney's case the art is in the beauty is in like the you know the the clean lines and and the and and they wouldn't necessarily I mean certainly you know the some of Courtney's outfits, even though they would, I would kind of consider them to be high fashion couture, like the, you know, the wing, the, the runway wings and whatnot. Um, you know, they, they, uh, they certainly would be, I would, I would certainly consider them to be artistic. They aren't campy. That's definitely true. And if, if, if the, if drag is being defined as, uh, you know if camp is part of the definition of drag then yeah she's she's not um she's not hitting that part of drag she can't even really she doesn't even really do camp well even when she has to i mean there was that one episode where she was doing this this movie that you know that movie shooting and like you know she like had like toothbrush hanging in her hair and all that kind of stuff and glasses kind of to the side i mean and just like was a really really poor attempt at trying to be campy. She can't really do it, but but I, I still think that there's something artistic there. I agree. I think I think maybe like I I would define drag as you know any any female dressing. You know, I I think I think she is doing drag. I just think I just think I I. I think we're all confronting our expectations of what drag is. And so for me, I think I just prefer the campier drag because I, I really like the funny, you know, the, the, the characters and the funny parts of it. Like I, I, I think I prefer the Queens that sort of have a whole persona that goes along with every look um, over just, you know, like just something really beautiful. Um, 
you know, there's no denying that everything that she does is really beautiful and like, it's nice to look at, but like, I think I'm just more going towards the campiness because I just prefer it from this art form. And I, you know, I think that's really what's happening. I don't think she's not doing drag. I think she's just not doing the, t- the type of drag that I like and, or, or expect. I, I feel <laughs> like it's not her being like, I, I, there's a difference between being consistent and being flat and Courtney's just flat. Like, yeah, she gives yeah. you the pretty, she gives you whatever, but it, there's nothing ever, you know, kind of over the top or really, that really punches you or holds you. Like she does okay, she does well, but she really does rest on being really pretty and she has talent and she knows that she can sing um, and she has the body, but she, she it's just flat usually. Did, like Beyonce's like, consistent, um, she's flat. Sorry, Shelly, I cut you. Oh, I'm, 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 that's all right. I was just, does this industry like have, I mean, what did it, did it start out being really campy? Like, I really don't know the, when it, when it started, were they, were they just guys trying to, you know, dress feminine or, you know, like a woman or, cause I mean, I don't dress like anything <laughs> like any of these, but if I, if I, if I'm going to dress up, I probably look more like, Courtney if I'm gonna do my makeup and stuff but I, I like I did what what would has it gone through like like has it gone through stages where where like where they were like did they start out really extreme like that or did they in that that campy look or did it did it start out just trying to look like a pretty woman and then then it got more extreme like how did it how did it evolve is that is that um, well I mean in Paris is burning we actually got to know uh uh, at least one queen that was obsessed w- uh, was was focused, I guess you would say, on her drag being as authentically a woman as as possible. I don't think that um, was what was her name? Was it Venus? What what was the what was the name? Not Venus. What was the name of the of the young of the young of the young queen who ended up dying? Yeah, I think that was Venus. Yeah, Venus. So, like, you know, I mean, Venus, like, never struck me as particularly campy. I mean, she was definitely of a specific class of and culture of people there in New York City, but she didn't strike me as somebody who was like doing anything like vivacious, which is really the extreme of camp when it comes to to drag. Well, we did, like, we talked about that before earlier um, on in the watch of the season that, you know, there, there was the realness mm-hmm. category to... That's a category that was... Drag. That category was about how much can you actually fool us into believing that you are a real woman. Mm. And, of course, real woman is different, right? Like, there's no real specific definition of what a real woman is. Courtney is not the definition of a real woman. Um, no, but, she looks like a Barbie. <laughs> but what, but, but, but what, uh, what it seems like the category realness does actually seem to encompass, that both Venus and, uh, and Courtney have in common, is it seems to be a category that has very little camp to it. Because the campier you are, the more you kind of give up the gig. You know what I mean? Like, you're, we know that you're just, that you're, that you're a man in drag. Speaking of realness, when all of the past queens were talking about, um, Bianca and how real they felt she was. I was like, I guarantee you that John's over there just cringing at this. <laughs> it wasn't really cringe. I was eye rolling. So when did. Karen said the line about the nine cameras, I laughed to myself and I thought of John. <laughs> <laughs> I was eye rolling. Sharon is one of my favorite queens too. I I tend to love the campy queens cuz I love camp, but I do love a few that are more into the beauty pageanty 
stuff, you guys should watch all of it. Like, just do it. It is so great. You you will get to meet so many great, great queens. My, so, okay. So my husband just like, I guess he's been listening to our conversation and he's peeked his head in. He was like, you like Bianca because of her comedy. And it made me think for a second because um, I like Bianca's really quick witted and funny. You know what I mean? Even when she's being mean, usually she's either a just telling the truth or just being funny with it. And I kind of have a soft spot for comedians because I always feel like they use that comedy as a way to cover up their own, like to build a wall. Cause I definitely do that. Um, and you know, like Robin Williams, like, you know, he was one of the funniest people ever. And we know now you know, he was struggling very much with depression and things. So I, I feel like I identify people who are really funny, quick witted with having a, a soft side innately. And so I, I think that's why I like Bianca so much that she's using that comedy. She could just be aware, like John said, it is cynically like you know the, what? That, you know, the camera to him, but that's actually fair because I, I would actually put, um, I would put Bianca into the same category of comedian as a Robin Williams with who I, I mean, I think that Robin Williams was a genius, but you know, Robin Williams style of comedy is not really my, is not really my thing. I kind of like a, a, a more understated drier comedy and, and uh and i find bianca like i just think that like every time bianca makes a joke i want to hear you know or <laughs> you know like, like like everything has a little bit like she she puts a little lilt at the end of every one of her jokes that like kind of sounds like she's doing a comedy bit you know mm -hmm. and that it should come with like a you know and you know Adore is one of those like comedians who do, does that kind of I'm clueless comedy, you know, like where she's funny, but like, I don't know I'm being funny, but you totally know that they're being funny. And I like that kind of humor. I like that kind of. Yeah, I comedy. don't. <laughs> I'm yeah, so I, get it. I get it. It's a it's a different. I grew up with a dad, my, my dad, Cuban dad, who was always hilarious in like a has no idea he's being hilarious, but I knew he knew he was being hilarious kind of thing. I... And especially playing up his immigrant, his immigrant, uh, you know, like re recognizing that he was funny, like playing yeah. up his, his immigrant accent and all of that kind of stuff. So I like, I, I like it. I'm going to get the recording, cut out that little tune that you just sang, write a sitcom just so every time after a joke is made, I can play you doing that little tune <laughs> because it was great. <laughs> yep. Every single joke that's made in my sitcom, that's going to be played after it. Instead of a laugh track, you can use that. Yep. Yeah, I, or I, like a... <laughs> I, I have this fantasy of a reality show starring John Cabrera and Bianca Del Rio. Like, I want to see... Yes. Oh, two my gosh. Yes. I mean, you know, I would, be, uh, yes. yeah, I would have reached out already, reached out to Bianca on social media if i didn't have a sinking fear that if she came on she would just read Annihilate me into the, she would Rose read me you. into the ground especially if and she I heard how like, i felt uh, about uh, about couch, her like, throughout next, the season <laughs> oh my gosh, What's up? That would be no i said like if she were here and she were reading you to filth if i were on the couch i would say me next me next <laughs> I know, oh my gosh, right? she would just... i love it she would read me, she would read me into the ground so that only my head was sticking out of the ground and then she would just stomp on it. <laughs> that would be amazing. Sounds... Listen, girl, I, mean, I want you to get stomped on, but that would be so great. You're ready. You're prepared, John. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so who do we, who, who are final picks for, I think we all know who everyone's picks are, but just who do we think? I think Bianca's going to win. 
It's going to be a travesty. I think it's going to be a Bianca too. It's going to be uh, amazing. And I, I, I kind of hope it is. I think Bianca. It's, it's going to be Bianca and and there's going to be a lot of people. I mean, like a lot of people who are going to be shouting from the rooftops at how Adore had that title stolen from her. So when you say a lot of people, you mean all the voices coming from deep within you as you... Yeah, were... basically. <laughs> yes. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I'm a Bianca fan, but I would be okay with, or like, I would be okay with her winning. But I just think Doors not as polished as Bianca. That's... All right, well, I'm going to leave as well. Thank you so much, Al, Regina, for hosting. This was a lot of fun. Um, we are uh, back tomorrow for, <laughs> excuse me, for another episode of Firefly. Then on Friday, we have our season finale episode of Rue, Paul's Drag Race Season 6 and a composable memento being dropped by L. You're going to need to collect the other mementos that she's dropped in order to vie for it. Uh, Saturday, we have Maisel, and that's another finale. And we go into next week uh, with just Firefly. And then we start our holiday hiatus. If you haven't gotten your um, your Secret Santa uh, memento made, please have that made by next week. Um, help me out so that I can um, get those done and identify the folks that need help getting their mementos uh, through the finish line. I'll see you all soon. Thanks for coming. Night, Thank you, John. Good night, John. Good night everyone. Good night. Good night.